then I, I just start with Jaira Adamalova <coughs> and then the first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So uh, today uh, I would like to uh, speak a few things uh, connected to this verse uh, from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, uh, first chapter uh, 43. Uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada's translation. Uh, when the luminaries in the sky, such as the moon, the sun, and the stars are reflected in liquids like oil or water, they appear to be of different shapes, sometimes round, sometimes long, and so on, because of the movements of the wind. Similarly, when the living entity, the soul, is absorbed in materialistic thoughts, he accepts various manifestations as his own identity because of ignorance. In other words, one is bewildered by mental concoctions sorry, uh, because of uh, agitation from the material modes of nature. Uh, Srila Prabhupada's purport. Uh, it's a longer one, but... Uh, it's nice to, to hear from him. So uh, this verse gives a very good example by which to understand the different positions of the eternal spiritual soul in the material world 
and how this soil takes on different bodies. They hunt up practice. The moon is uh, stationary and is one, but when it is reflected in water or oil, it appears to take different shapes, shapes because of the movements of the wind. Similarly, the soul is, is uh, the eternal servant of Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead, but when put into the material modes of nature, it takes different bodies, sometimes as a demigod, sometimes a man, a dog, a tree, and so on. By the influence of Maya, the illusory potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the living entity thinks that he is this person, that person, American, Indian, cat, dog, tree, or whatever. This is called Maya. When one is freed from this uh, bewilderment and understands that the soul does not belong to any shape of this material world, one is situated uh, in the spiritual platform, Brahma Bhuta. Uh, this realization is sometimes explained as nirakara or formlessness. This formlessness, however, does not mean that the soul has no form. The soul has form, but uh, the external agitating form he has acquired because of material contamination is false. Similarly, God is also described as nirakara, which means that God has no material form, but is Satchitananda Vigraha. The living entity is part and parcel of the supreme Satchitananda Vigraha, uh, but his material forms are temporary or illusionary. Both the living entity and the Supreme Lord have original spiritual forms, Satchitananda Vigraha, but the Lord, the Supreme, does not change his form. The Lord appears as he is, uh, whereas uh, the living entity appears because uh, material nature forces him to accept different forms. When the living entity receives these uh, different forms, he identifies with them and not with, this, not with his original spiritual form. As soon as the living entity returns to his original spiritual form and understanding, he immediately surrenders to the supreme form, the supreme personality of Godhead. This is explained in Bhagavad Gita, 7th uh, seven, uh, chapter 19. Bahunam jammanam ante gyanavam mam prapadyate. Uh, when the living entity, after many, many births uh, in different forms, returns to his original form of Krishna consciousness, he immediately surrenders unto the lotus feet of the supreme form Krishna. This is liberation. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, uh, 54th verse, Brahma Bhuta Prasannatman, Ashochati Nakangshati, Samar Sarveshu Bhuteshu Madbaktim Labate Param. One who is thus transcendentally situated at once realizes the Supreme Brahman and becomes fully joyful. He never laments nor desires to have anything. He is equally uh, disposed to every living entity. In that state, he attains pure devotional service unto me. Surrender unto the Supreme Form is the result of bhakti. This bhakti or understanding uh, of one own position is the complete liberation. As long as one is under the impersonal understanding of the absolute truth, he is not in pure knowledge, but must still struggle for pure knowledge. Klesho dikatara stesham avyakta sakta chetasam. Bhagavad Gita 12, chapter, verse 5. Although one may be spiritually advanced, if one is attached to the impersonal feature uh, of the absolute truth, one must still work very hard, as indicated by the words Klesho uh, Dikatara, which mean greater suffering. A devotee, however, easily attains his original position as a spiritual form and understands the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his original form. Krishna himself explains the forms of the living entities in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, uh, where he clearly says to Arjuna that he, Arjuna, and all other living entities who were previously in their original forms are separate individual uh, identities. They were individuals in the past, they are now situated in the in individuality, and in the future they will us, uh, all continue to maintain their individual forms. The only difference is that uh, the conditioned living entity appears in various material forms, whereas uh, Krishna appears in his original spiritual form. Unfortunately, those who are not advanced in spiritual knowledge think that Krishna is like one of them and that his form is like their material forms. 
Avajananti Mamuda Manusim Tanum Ashritam, Bhagavad Gita, 9th chapter, verse 11. Krishna is never puffed up by material knowledge and is therefore called Achuta. Whereas uh, the living entities fall down and are agitated by material nature. This is the difference between the Supreme Lord and the living entities. Uh, in this connection, it is to be noted that Vasude Vasudeva, who was situated in a transcendental position, advised Kamsa not to commit further sinful activities. Kamsa, a representative of the demons, was always ready to kill Krishna or God, whereas Vasudeva represents transcendentally situated person to whom Krishna is born. Vasudeva is the son of Vasudeva. Vasudeva wanted his brother-in-law, Kamsa, to refrain from the sinful act of killing his sister, since the result of being agitated by material nature would be that Kamsa would have to accept a body in which to suffer again and again. Elsewhere, in Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, fifth chapter, fourth verse, uh, Vishabadeva also said, says, Nasadu manyate yata atmanoyam asan api kleshada asadeha. As long as the living entity is entangled in the fruitive activities of so called happiness and distress, he will receive a particular type of body in which to, uh, to endure uh, the three kinds of suffering due to material nature, tritapa yantrana. An intelligent person, therefore, must free himself from the influence of the three modes of material nature and revive his original spiritual body by engaging in the service of the Supreme Person Krishna. As long as one is materially attached, one must accept the process of birth, death, old age, and disease. One is therefore advised that an intelligent person, instead of being entangled in so-called good and bad uh, fruitive, uh, fruitive activities should engage his life in advancing in Krishna consciousness so that instead of accepting another material body, he will return home back to Godhead. Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Devi Guravani Pacharine Nehvishesha Sunyavadi Pashyati Deshatarine Jashi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadatara Shiva Sadi Gura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtai Bhutale Srimate Chaitanya Swami Niti Namine so uh, thank you very much for uh, everyone who, who has joined. Uh, it's, it's a very, very co complex verse. Um, so it's uh, obviously, it's just impossible to, to mention all the important points uh, here. Uh, but um, I would like to emphasize two of them. And uh, the first one is uh, about the uh, material modes of nature. Here in this part, uh, this verse is when uh, uh, Kamsa heard this, uh, this voice from the sky, uh, which mentioned to him that uh, uh, Devaki's uh, eighth uh, child uh, will be the cause of uh, his death. So he was afraid because actually demons like to, to seem strong and be strong. But all of this is because they are really, really afraid of, uh, of um, the ultimate fear is obviously the fear of uh, death. And um, also fear of losing power and so many things. So the first thought uh, which came uh, into Kamsa's mind was uh, that uh, he tried to kill Devaki, uh, even though uh, previously uh, he, he had such a, great so-called love for his, uh, his sister, but uh, now uh, he tried to uh, kill her. And uh, Basudeva, uh, the husband uh, of Devaki, uh, he tries to convince Kam Kamsa to change his mind. And uh, obviously uh, it's not, uh, not about how you should love God, <laughs> Krishna is, is God, 
uh, we are begat, but uh, but uh, tries to convince him in a way that uh, you know with a business like mentality uh, which Kamsa has, uh, it's also uh, reasonable. So uh, first he start to uh, starts to speak about that. Uh, uh, actually, that is inev inevitable for uh, everyone. Uh, but we are not the body, so he starts to speak about how this uh, change of uh, body happens. And uh, this is where we are now. And uh, this first, uh, especially, is very, very beautiful, I think, and shows uh, what uh, Vedic literature is uh, like, that uh, it's, uh, it gives uh, knowledge, but at the same time, it, it gives uh, so beautifully with uh, metaphors and and you know if you just imagine this uh, this uh, moon sun and how these reflect on the water and oil is just just beautiful so i just thought of uh, noting this because i i remember i i watched this uh, series of mahabharata and and for me it was just amazing that everything they said uh, it was uh, so poetic and so beautiful so this is uh, this is Vedic marriage and uh, Vedic culture, actually. So it's just one point. Uh, but also, uh, uh, we can see that uh, in this process of uh, changing the body, it's, uh, there is a, a great part of it. Uh, actually, it depends on what are our desires and what are our uh, actions uh, in our life, uh, which uh, connects to to the three mode of, modes of nature. Because uh, Krishna speaks in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, he says that uh, actually we think that we are the doer, but uh, in reality, the three modes are, of nature are, are the doers. So it's really important to understand uh, these uh, three modes of nature. And uh, when we speak about this, it's a uh, verb uh, starting from the really, really beginning. Uh, you know, origin story <laughs> of the three modes of nature, because it, uh, it helps to understand more uh, how powerful, uh, powerful uh, these uh, modes of nature are. So in the beginning, um, uh, when the universe is in an unmanifest, uh, unmanifested state, there is uh, this pradana. And uh, it contains uh, all the material elements and all the three modes of nature, time, and everything in an inactive state. For me, it, uh, I just uh, thought that it's like uh, this, uh, this game, this um, Lego. Uh, I, I hope <laughs> everybody knows what it is. So we had these, you know, these small brick, bricks, and we, we bought a box of this Lego, uh, which contained. Uh, castle or a police station or something like that, but in, in the box in, in an unmanifested state. So there are the small bricks, but, uh, but some parts are so special that you cannot, from, from, from this castle box, you won't be able to make a police station because the castle box contains horses and, um, and you know, all the designs are like, like a, a castle. So, uh, when you, you take it at, out and put together, then it will be manifested as a castle. So there is this, uh, this pradana, and uh, when, the, uh, when um, Karanodakasai Vishnu uh, looks at it, then uh, time manifests first uh, from his glimpse. And, um, uh, and uh, time will activate these gunas, the material uh, three modes of material nature. And uh, these gunas starts to interact with each other. And uh, this will manifest the whole variety of uh, creation. And um, for me, it meant that uh, these, uh, these gunas are, are there right at the beginning. And uh, these really, these manifest uh, uh, everything. So it's very, very, very much a basic thing. And uh, really powerful. So uh, we can understand that uh, we can uh, uh, understand which kind of <clears throat> guna we are seeing in, in activities in certain uh, sense objects or, or anything, but uh, 
it's not within our power to uh, to ov overcome the effects uh, effects of the these gunas and uh, there is this uh, this verse uh, it's from Srimad Bhagavatam 11th canto it's when uh, <clears throat> Krishna and uh, Uddhava are speaking uh, and uh, Krishna says my dear Uddhava the combination of all the three modes is present in the mentality of I and mine. Uh, the ordinary transactions of this world, which are carried out through the agency of the mind, the objects uh, of the perception, the senses, and the vital airs of the physical body, are also based on the combination of the modes. <coughs> Sorry. So I've uh, I've uh, heard uh, one class uh, from uh, His Holiness uh, Radhanath Swami, and uh, he said about uh, this verse that uh, in the material wor world we won't find these gunas in in a in a pure state. So all the time we see that uh, they are mixed in some way. Uh, there is no pure. <laughs> uh, uh, mode of ignorance or pure mode of passion, but uh, they are always mixed, and there is one of them which is uh, dominant over, over the others. Uh, the mode of goodness is a somewhat different, so that's why we, we used to separate uh, uh, this uh, Shuddha Sattva from the others. That's, that's uh, different, but um, Usually when we, when we speak about that uh, something is uh, tamastic or rajastic, it means that uh, it contains uh, different uh, modes of nature, but uh, one is dominant uh, over the others. And uh, yeah, obviously we, we try to, uh, to move forward to be more uh, in the mode of goodness. Uh, we have to elevate to that point because that will help, uh, help us to, to get to the pure goodness to the spiritual platform. So we can see that uh, these gunas are the, the basic of, uh, basis of uh, existence uh, in the material world. And um, there is uh, another verse uh, which uh, Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita uh, that uh, the spirit soul uh, bewildered by the influence of false ego thinks him, uh, himself the doer of activities that are in actuality carried out by the three modes of material nature. So we can see here that, yeah, we think that we are the doers, but actually <clears throat> we are not. Uh, but uh, the reason for that is the false ego. So here we see that, uh, yeah, we can blame the, <laughs> the material na uh, nature and the material modes of uh, nature, but, uh, but yeah, uh, this, uh, this false ego is also a problem. And uh, this false ego, <clears throat> this is the reason uh, why we, who are originally uh, have uh, this nature that uh, we are eternal, we are full with knowledge, we are uh, forever blissful, uh, still uh, we are forced into this uh, temporary world and uh, do, uh, living in a, in a temporary body and uh, our happiness is limited, even the, how to say, the quantity of it and uh, and the quality of it, everything is limited, and uh, it's not not what we are originally, and uh, it it just totally uh, something else uh, from our nature. Still, we identify ourselves with this, and we think that uh, uh, yeah, I am this body, I am woman, I am a programmer, I am a, a mother or a doctor or. European, uh, Indian, American, uh, things like this. But uh, ultimately we could see, uh, say that this false ego makes me think that I am the enjoyer, I am the proprietor, and I am the controller. And uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that I am the source of my spiritual and uh, material words. Everything emanates from me. So. We can see from here that actually all of the previous uh, things which I think of myself, uh, that I am the enjoyer, I am the proprietor, I am the controller, this is all for us, all imaginary, because Krishna is the enjoyer, Krishna is the proprietor, and he is the controller. So it's, uh, it's good to know um, 
who am I? Uh, it's very important because that will uh, uh, determine my, uh, my desires, my actions and everything. And uh, Sheila Prabhupada, uh, mentions uh, in the purport of this verse, this uh, Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma, and uh, connected to, to our desires. Uh, this is very interesting that uh, he says that uh, those uh, who realized the Supreme Brahman, uh, I just try to highlight the important parts in this regard. Yeah. So he never laments or desires to have anything. And in the material world, we can see that we are all the time have desires for achieving something, this or that or something else. And uh, after some time, uh, we will surely lose it uh, if we get, and then uh, lament uh, will come. So how to go a bit more into detail, uh, let's take an example. So I, I, I would like a car. I see a very nice car in the street. Uh, it's, it's very, I know that it's, it's uh, very safe and, uh, and uh, comfortable and it goes nicely, easy to drive. The color is nice and mm, it would be so nice if I, I had this car. And uh, later on, I start to think about it uh, that, oh yeah, if I had this car, then I would go with this uh, shopping and I wouldn't have to carry all the, those bags and the public transport to home. And I would do this and that, and I could uh, travel with, uh, with that car on long distances. And, and I meditate uh, on this uh, desire more and more and more. And uh, at some point it will be really, really strong. And I will start to make plans how to get that car. And it will be even more strong, stronger and I will become more and more attached to it. And uh, many times if we have the uh, needed good karma, then we can even achieve uh, these desires. Uh, it depends on many things because if uh, this desire, if we get it, it's not good for our spiritual lives. It's different than, than Krishna. Uh, don't give it, but usually if we accumulate uh, enough karma, then we can um, have the, the desired sense object, maybe not in this life, next life, but something. And uh, I, I might be happy. I'm not sure if I will be, but I might be happy for some time. But uh, then the car starts to get old and maybe there will be an accident or something will happen and uh, I will lose the car. And I start to lament that, oh, how, it ni how nice it was when I didn't have to carry those, those bags from the grocery shop and, and stuff like that. So uh, all the time, uh, these material desires and uh, laments. And um, uh, it, it's like uh, going up for some time, uh, when we are meditating the desire and being up and then just going down where, when we start to lament. And that's short peri a period of time between uh, desiring and lamenting. That short period uh, is what we call happiness. So our material life is, uh, contains these many, many, many ups and uh, going up and being up and, and down. But uh, it's, it's all the time like this. We, we cannot stay high forever <laughs> in, a, <clears throat> in a material way. And uh, uh, there is a, a story which I, I've heard that uh, there was one man who decided to go to, uh, to get some water from the well at night. And it was a beautiful, clear night. There, was no, uh, there were no uh, uh, clouds on the sky. Uh, there was a full moon, it sh shined very brightly. And the man arrived to the well and uh, looked down into the well. Uh, it's similar to, <laughs> to this verse which we started with. So in the well, uh, uh, he, he noticed the reflection uh, of the moon. And uh, he wasn't a really intelligent man. He, he, he started to think, oh my God, the, the, the moon fell into the well. I have to save the moon because, because what will happen to us without the, the moon and the sky? 
So uh, he uh, put this uh, bucket uh, and started uh, this to, to go down and, uh, and uh, heard when, uh, when it, it arrived to the bottom and started to pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. And uh, when it was on the top, almost on the top, uh, somehow it stuck. And uh, he just, with a big, uh, big effort, uh, he took it out, but uh, he fell over because of this great, uh, great uh, physical effort. And um, yeah, the bucket just fell out of the well. And uh, when uh, he fell to the back, he again uh, saw the sky and he saw that, oh, there is the moon. So I, I could uh, have the moon to get out of the well. But uh, he never realized that it wasn't his effort and that uh, it wasn't uh, the moon in the well, actually. And this is how we see things in this uh, material life that uh, we, we are so much uh, into these illusionary things. And uh, the solution is that uh, when we are so much engaged in it, just to look up uh, to Krishna, to transcendental knowledge, and, uh, and then we will see that what is real, uh, actually. And uh, uh, yeah, I spoke about this uh, going up and going down when there is this uh, state of, uh, of uh, uh, desiring material things and uh, lamenting. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it both is something which we don't call happiness, but uh, there is actually lamenting is better uh, from the two of, of these. And, and I've heard uh, one very interesting uh, example uh, to, il, um, to show this, uh, which was uh, Chitra Ketu Maharaj. Uh, and Chitra, Chitra Ketu Maharaj was, uh, was a powerful king. He had everything, everything really, literally everything, uh, lots of servants, great uh, wealth, uh, so many things, but uh, he just uh, didn't have one thing. He had so many wives, even uh, beautiful wives, and originally they were quite qualified wives, and uh, and uh, he just uh, didn't have a son or or daughter, so he didn't have a child, and uh, he was terribly, terribly desiring to have a have a child and. Um, uh, when uh, uh, he was visited uh, by, uh, oh, I forgot the name of, of uh, that money. Sorry, I won't remember now. But uh, so he, uh, he started just to complain about, uh, about that uh, he doesn't have a child. And uh, he, <clears throat> he just uh, got this benediction. Uh, to to have uh, have the child and uh, then he was happy that yeah I had I have a son and uh, he was he, he really feel, felt so happy but after some time <coughs> when uh, his wives the co-wives of uh, the one who who gave birth to the to the child they poisoned uh, this child and then uh, Chitra Ketu Maharaj started to lament. And uh, when Narada Muni and the, the other one uh, again uh, came to him uh, and uh, he, he told uh, what happened to him, they, they started to, to speak uh, transcendental knowledge to him. Because uh, previously when, when he, was, uh, he was in this great desire, he couldn't uh, have, have listened to it. He, he couldn't have uh, understand it because uh, the focus was something, something else. And uh, he was really, really in, uh, in this uh, illusion state. But when he was lamenting, then, um, uh, then he could hear the transcendental knowledge. So when, we, when Krishna sends these tests and, tests and difficult situations to us, uh, this is the reason that at that point we can hear the message, which uh, others, otherwise uh, we wouldn't be able to hear. And uh, yeah, I'm not really sure if I should go on because actually I'm at the half of, the <laughs> of what I uh, collected, but uh, it's already past, uh, past the uh, hours. So what should I do? 
Shall we discuss this uh, or shall I continue? I think, Mataji, we can see if there are any questions, comment or relation, otherwise can continue. Okay. If it's okay with you, please. So if anybody has any comments, realizations, So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions or comments or relation, you can ask now, please. Maybe you can continue, Mataji, if it's okay with you, please. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh... So my second point uh, was that um, it's a completely different uh, topic, but it's uh, uh, when I read this verse, I, I just couldn't help but uh, think about it. Uh, that uh, as you can see that uh, we are at the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, just at the doorstep of uh, Sri Krishna taking birth. And uh, there will be lots of pastimes with him and, and uh, so many things. That, and even here, after reading so much about these basics that uh, <clears throat> I am not this body and how uh, changing of bodies uh, take place, uh, again, we hear about this. And I, I, uh, I just started to think, uh, why is it that uh, anywhere, if we, <laughs> if we uh, take a, a book of, uh, of the scriptures, we will definitely see these parts that uh, you are not this body, you are a servant, uh, you are the eternal servant of, uh, of uh, Sri Krishna. And, uh, you know, these are just like uh, small slogans that uh, I, I could think that, yeah, yeah, I, I know I'm not this body. I've heard it so many times and, uh, and I already remember it. Uh, remember it. Uh, so why, why it's all the time emphasized uh, throughout all the scriptures and uh, not just in Srila Prabhupada's purpose, but uh, even the verses, because here the verse itself uh, spoke about this. And uh, I, I just started to list a few, few things about uh, this. And the first two, uh, which are very, very prominent is that, one is that uh, we forget it, and the other is that we don't understand it. And these two are actually connected because uh, if we really, really understand something uh, deep, deep down understanding, not just theoretically, then we don't really forget it. So I would first speak about uh, this um, forgetting uh, things, but uh, we know that uh, there is two type of, types of knowledge, uh, Jnana and Vigyana. Jnana is uh, when we understand something theoret theoretically, and uh, Vigyan is when it's, it's, uh, uh, this knowledge uh, went more deeper uh, into the heart, and uh, it became uh, realized knowledge, practical knowledge. So we also know how to, how to apply it uh, properly. And uh, this is actually needed that uh, we, we remember this knowledge in the uh, in the time when we need it. Because sometimes, I don't know how you are with this topic, but sometimes I, I have this uh, experience that uh, I, I, uh, there is this like mantra, this Trinada Pisunichina, we are the time uh, chanted together and we remember it. And, uh, and it's, it's there so many times in, in our, uh, our day, day to day life. But uh, when someone comes, and, uh, and hurts, hurts us, hurt, hurts me, then uh, is it the first thing which comes into my mind that I should be humble? Or I will just uh, talk back something, uh, something also hurtful or just uh, react in a, in a proud way, you know? So, so in, this, in this certain time when, when we need this knowledge, Will it come to our mind or, or just when, when we speak about it theoretically? So it's, uh, it's one very important thing. And uh, also another uh, situation that uh, 
uh, we spoke about it previously that uh, sometimes we are going up, sometimes we are going down. And uh, going down is the, the luckier uh, part of it uh, in a spiritual as aspect. <clears throat> but uh, when we are in that state, the things are going, uh, going on very, they are, things are difficult and, and we have to make so much effort and still it's difficult. And uh, in that situation, we remember Krishna and uh, do we remember that, yeah, everything is according to his plans and, uh, and uh, he's my shelter, he will take care of me or uh, I have to suffer my previous karma. Uh, is it what comes into my mind? And is it uh, what, I, I, uh, what is the basic uh, of how I will react into that situation or something else? So the question is that, uh, do we remember these things when it's needed? Also, it's an obvious thing that uh, when we have to uh, change our bodies, uh, we forget all the theoretical knowledge. So I just uh, thought that maybe I, uh, there is some, I mean, for example, lately <clears throat> my dad uh, uh, had a problem with his heart and he needed heart surgery. But uh, just, I just imagine that if someone came and said that, yeah, yeah, I, I promise you that in my previous life, I had a diploma and I was a doctor and I could, uh, I, I could do heart surgery. I would do it to, to you now. Obviously, I, don't, I wouldn't want my father <laughs> to, to lie down under, under the knives of that person because I'm, I'm sure that he wouldn't be able to do that surgery. So, so all this knowledge is uh, lost. Uh, those knowledge which, uh, which, which goes deep down that is which we can, uh, we can keep uh, in our next life, lives. And uh, the other part that uh, we don't understand these things. I remember when um, uh, in, in one uh, disciples meeting, Buddha Bhavana Prabhu uh, spoke about uh, this, that um, when we read the scriptures, we, at first we actually don't get uh, the real message uh, from it, uh, but uh, what is coming through our conditioned state. So we have our filters and something is coming through uh, like, like glasses, which are red. And you, you know, we see everything in red at the, in, in that state. And the more and more we read again and again, uh, we will be purified and uh, the more and more we will get from the original message. So we will understand more and more as we read more and more and, uh, and uh, think about it and apply it, realize it. So, so it's, uh, it's very important to, uh, to cultivate this knowledge in this way. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, I just skip this part. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, also, um, so it's it's so nice to to you know read about uh, uh, Sri Krishna's pastimes, but uh, how can we understand those uh, without understanding the basics? So I remember when I first uh, read the tenth canto, and uh, I I read it uh, in order, so I didn't skip uh, any canto. Still, I had some difficulty to understand that why Krishna and Balaram behave like this or in this way or that way, because uh, I saw it a little bit in a, in a material way. So uh, we have to really, really understand the basics uh, of who am I, uh, who are all our jivas, and who is Krishna, and wh what is our relationship with him, because only it, in that way can we understand uh, something of Krishna's, um, Krishna's actions. Otherwise we cannot. And, uh, you know, if we really uh, read them in, a, in, a, in an improper way, uh, it could cause problems. Uh, we can even be offensive or something. So, so we just have to, to take the first steps and uh, don't skip uh, any of them. And then we can uh, get to the top of the, the whole stairs. And uh, 
Also, it was very interesting. I was uh, once uh, talking to one of my uh, friends and uh, she's a, a disciple of uh, Keshava Bharati Maharaj. And uh, she quoted him that uh, actually devotees don't really make a, a different difference between uh, the different parts of the scripture. So yes, yeah, sometimes it's easier to, to listen to past times uh, because they are so relishable. But, uh, but the philosophical part is also interesting and the basics are also interesting. So uh, it's, it's really uh, unlimited in, in their depth. And um, as uh, Guru Maharaj also used to, uh, to speak about this many times, how uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur for months, uh, he could speak about one verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam and there was no, no repetition. So there was no two times when it was the same point. And, um, and the, there is always something new and something interesting. And uh, all the time we can remember that this is connected to Krishna. And uh, when we, have, we can hear something from Krishna, uh, is just uh, enjoyable. So it's uh, so those who have a taste for hearing, they have a taste for hearing also the basics. And uh, I I made a list also that, uh, for example, there is this uh, this concept that we are not the body, but uh, in different parts of the scriptures uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, this is uh, in a different context. So, for example, in the ninth, ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is Yayati Maharaj. And uh, Yayati Maharaj wants to enjoy and wants to uh, make his life longer to have more uh, enjoyment in it. And there is the conclusion that uh, it, it doesn't worth it. So this part, when uh, we are not the body, uh, the, the main message that it's not, not worth just trying to lengthen the, the, the life to, to get more enjoyment. Uh, but let's see another point about uh, what we, we need, what, are, are ne what is necessary for me. Uh, also in the ninth canto, there is the story of uh, Ranti Deva. Uh, he, he fasted for 48 uh, days. And uh, after that, there was uh, the prasadam and uh, he, wanted to start to, to take prasadam and break the, uh, the fa fasting. And uh, someone came to him and another person came to him and one after another, so many uh, uh, people came and, and as I remember, it was even a dog. Uh, so in the end, uh, there was nothing left for him, but uh, he, he gave up even his necessi necessities. So it's another point. Uh, and uh, it was also, there is another point like this fasting type of thing uh, in Ambarish Maharaj's case. But in that case, we can see that uh, how it's proper to break the, 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 this uh, fast. And uh, there are these rule, rules and regulations too. Also, there are different aspects like how I should, uh, should I protect myself or, and how I should protect myself. And there are different situations like also in Ambarish Maharaj's case, he just didn't do anything to protect himself from the demon, uh, which was created by Durvasaman Muni. Uh, Pralad Maharaj, when uh, his uh, father tried to kill him, he also didn't protect himself, but uh, his focus was uh, how to give to others, like uh, preaching to his classmates. So uh, he even uh, thought about this in, in his situation. Uh, Bali Maharaj was another um, example. He even, he, he himself offered his life. And uh, Parikshit Maharaj, when uh, he came to know that his life uh, will end very soon, he turned to transcendental knowledge. On the other hand, we can see that in Vrindavan, when something happens, they, they don't just sit down and start to meditate on Brahman or something, but uh, they start to cry out to, to Krishna. So it's different in, in any situation, but we can hear so many different uh, examples and we can get um, 
some different message uh, everywhere, although the basic that you are not the body is the same everywhere. Uh, also, one another point, and this is the, the end of uh, these examples, that um, uh, how we should behave with, uh, with relatives. So in Chitra Ketu Maharaj's case, not to lament uh, when we, we lose some, someone, uh, it, in a material way, uh, I'm, I would uh, say this uh, because obviously devotees and uh, it's, it's a bit different uh, topic. And uh, also there is Arjuna's case uh, who didn't want to kill relatives, but uh, Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita. So different uh, angles, how to understand the same topic. So although the, the basic that you are not the body is same everywhere, but uh, it's in a little bit different dress and uh, we, can, we can a bit uh, understand it in, in context, how to practice it, how to understand it. Also one very nice uh, thing about this that uh, many, many cases when we, we hear these, these basic things, uh, they are like uh, prayers offered by demigods or so many things. And uh, for example, we can, we can learn how to properly pray, uh, offer prayers because uh, sometimes we, we offer prayers that, yeah, my dear Lord, I'm, I'm in such a difficult situation, please help me. <laughs> and, and this is also a type of prayer, but, uh, but how to, we can learn how to glorify uh, Krishna and, uh, and learn from these, these nice examples. And the last point is that um, I would like to make is that uh, we have to make uh, Krishna uh, our friend because uh, mm, I try, try to find the verse in just a minute. Uh, so, yeah, so Krishna said this in Bhagavad Gita that uh, the very ancient science of the relationship with the Supreme is today taught by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend and can therefore understand the transcendental uh, mystery of this science. So we can understand this only uh, if we, uh, we become Krishna's friends. And uh, there is, uh, in, in every relationship, uh, every relationship, there are two sides, that uh, Krishna is my friend, and I'm also Krishna's, I'm a friend of Krishna. So, uh, feelings on both sides. And uh, this, this will make the, the relationship. And it also means that uh, I have to know myself, and I ha also have to know him. And, uh, you know, it's uh, always, uh, sometimes I have this feeling that it's not so enjoyable when I, I try to know myself, but then it came to my mind that uh, people, so people are so happy when, you know, they make these tests on Facebook that I'm like this, I'm like that. And uh, there are in different magazines, there are tests which help you define, uh, I mean, uh, to, to understand that you are like this, you are like that. Sometimes, uh, People go to psychologists and uh, they come, oh, I just realized that I'm like this. And they seem so happy. So actually, when we, we have this adventure to, to discover who we are, uh, uh, it's, it's really a, it's an adventure and it's also enjoyable. And obviously, when we, we uh, start to learn what, is, what Krishna is like uh, and uh, his qualities, his pastimes, uh, it's also uh, enjoyable. So, so we have to, to know how this works. I am like this, he is like this, and also this, uh, the connection. What should I do uh, to get from here to there? So these are the basics. And uh, by practicing this again and again and again, uh, we, will, uh, we can achieve uh, this uh, love of God. So this is <laughs> this is uh, with, uh, what I, uh, I I prepared for today. So dear devotees, if anybody has any anything to add, uh, 
realizations or, or, or questions or something, please come forward. Many thanks, Mataji. It's so nice, uh, like full of so nice examples. Uh, you give so many examples and nice content. So thank you very much uh, for nice uh, class. Thank you so quite much useful. for the possibility and for, for be, being a part of it. <laughs> it's quite useful, Mataji. And I uh, agree, like when you were saying that uh, uh, this, how we need to change our perception uh, in terms of reading these scriptures and all, yeah, it definitely changes perception of a thought process. It makes people broad-minded, devotee thought process is very different compared to uh, pure materialistic people. So if somebody is doing something wrong, uh, somebody gave me this example sometime back and I really loved it that, uh, uh, if somebody is reacting wrongly, then devotee who is really on the right consciousness feels that everybody is in Maya illusion. Yeah. So if he is or she is not reacting properly with me, it's just because everybody and we all are trying to overcome Maya. So I should not react at least from my end badly uh, because it's not that person's fault. Just it changed the complete per perception. Otherwise, in the normal material way, we feel like people need to behave as per the way I would like to. And if they behave wrongly or in a differently, we feel like why they are uh, not behaving in the way uh, they should. So thank you very much, Mataji. So nice examples. Thank you. Hare Krishna, yeah, dear devotees. Sorry, for, Mataji. Uh, just it, uh, thank you for adding uh, this because uh, it just came to my mind that uh, for me, it was such a big uh, realization when I, I first uh, realized that uh, we always uh, say that, yes, you are not this body, but it doesn't only mean that I am not this hand, not this only this head, face, and hair and stuff, but uh, it also means that, um, that I'm, not, I'm not this mind and not this intelligence. And uh, it's such a liberating feeling. I remember that uh, once I, I met um, one Mataji, and uh, and she asked, how how are you? And I said, oh my mind, I, I I'm I'm so terrible. My mind is uh, torturing me and and everything. And she said that yeah yeah. But in these situations, I just remember that I'm also not this mind. And I realized that oh yeah, that uh, I I might have these bad thoughts and bad feelings, but this is just some kind of uh, contamination. So I'm not not originally that ba bad. <laughs> person or, or something and and also one step further to understand that uh, yeah i am not this body uh, not this ghost and not this subtle uh, body uh, but but it also means that others are also not that body not those bodies so when someone behaves with me in, in some way uh, it doesn't mean that uh, that person is bad uh, if it hurts me but it means that, yeah, he, he might also have something to work on, but, uh, but he or she is working on it. So, so all of us uh, are, are trying to, to get closer and closer to Krishna, but all of us has some difficult, I mean, different, different situation. So, so it, it helped me to understand a bit more that, um, that, uh, Others are, are not just, you know, they, they are also endeavoring and they also have difficulties and, uh, and yeah, like that. So thank you for, for adding this point. So, That's very uh, true, anybody... Mataji. Thank you very much. It's really, really true. <laughs> how things changes, how, like once we start thinking that we are not the body really change it a lot. And for me personally, I am still not able to think completely at that level that we are not body. I think it's going to take a long time uh, because our whole process change when we start thinking we are not body in terms of reacting with everyone. Yeah, we yeah that's just... for sure. I also suffer with this <laughs> at this point. <laughs> it looks like a long process, but that initial awareness is really good and practice that for. Uh, initial yeah. thought yeah so that's going to help us so thank you Mataji yeah, and, and I, I have this uh, experience that uh, when I, I meditate on some um, some certain topics and and uh, try to uh, to be better and better and practice it 
Krishna always sends something which is in, in that context and context and, and uh, gives the possibility to, to practice and understand it in, in the different angles. So he always uh, supports our learning process. <laughs> Jai, Jai. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, comments or relation, please. Unmute yourself now. I don't have any question. I have maybe just some a small request if we could chant together. Um, maybe uh, one Maha Mantra or one round on uh, the beat or Nishina Kavacha Sutra if you are ready, if you have uh, some time more. For all devotees who contracted uh, COVID in uh, Ljubljana. Oh, it's a uh, that bad situation there. Yeah, I also I'm also sick. Sri Devi Mataji and uh, a few others are as well. Uh, okay, I I have the time, so uh, I think it's a nice idea. Uh, it depends on what. Uh, the other devotees would like to do. Uh, yeah. Or otherwise, we can do Nashinga the prayer also, because that's more powerful, also. Whatever, I'm okay, Mataji, whatever devotee wants. Not good in make the, making these kinds of decisions, sorry. Yeah, um, Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you for the class. Um, um, so uh, I think um, I'll stop recording and uh, stop the live stream and then we can do that, um, I guess. Uh, we can also do that uh, I in in some order. I, I can sing the, the Nisim Hakanam if you would like to, but um, and also we can chant one round. So for me, it's okay. I, I have the time. So yes, Matthew, sure. what is best? Uh, uh, is it okay if I start with uh, Nisim Hapanam and then? Yes, Mataji. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I try to get my karatas because, oh, I have it. It was such a long uh, thing that I forgot where, where I put it. Okay. Namaste. <laughs> 